When I was a kid, I was gifted a decade old Tandy 1000. While my friends were enjoying their PlayStations, I was loading up Frogger and Hangman. It was fun, but like any kid would, I got bored of its limitations and eventually got my own PlayStation. That old Tandy disappeared somewhere along the way, and I almost forgot it ever existed, until one day a random Tandy 1000 video popped up on my YouTube feed. I wanted to revisit the era to mess around with those simple 8 and 16 bit systems again. But vintage machines are expensive, they take up a lot of space, and they're not easy to set up. Recently, that's all changed, and I've been using some hardware that provides retro computing with modern amenities. I took these photos at the Center for Computing History. The BBC Micro and the 380Z both have well-known microprocessors, the 6502 and the Z80 respectively. This is the Neo 6502, a modern retro computer with a 6502 microprocessor. The RP2040 is a coprocessor to handle memory and modern interfaces such as HDMI and USB. And this is the Aegon Lite 2, another modern retro computer that's Z80 based. The ESP32 is used as a sound and graphics coprocessor. The Neo 6502 is pretty awesome as it comes with an HDMI port that makes it plug and play for modern displays. Mine came with this version of firmware that runs a selection of retro games and has the basic programming language built in. I also tried the Morpheus firmware with NeoBasic. It has a nice editor for you to write your code in. The provided turtle graphics are really fun to mess around with. It also comes with a small sound effects library. Here are some samples. The Aegon Lite 2 has a VGA port, so if you don't have an older monitor, you're gonna have to get an adapter. It does have a micro SD slot, which is great for transferring files. I was having trouble running the many available programs for the Aegon until I finally upgraded the firmware and I was able to cross compile C code. After downloading a compiler from GitHub, I found a chatbot written in C and then created a binary file. Put that on an SD card, pop the SD card in the Aegon and was able to run that chatbot in the Aegon. And yeah, you could use an emulator, but there's just something really fun about working on the actual hardware. The Pico Mac is an honorable mention, as it is just an emulator that runs on the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is version 2, which has a Raspberry Pi Pico and a VGA port, but there is a newer version 3 that has a built-in SD card slot. It's based off the Mac 128K. It runs the Pico Micro Mac firmware. Missile Command is definitely my favorite game on here. While these are fun and capable devices, they don't fully replace the older hardware. Have you tried any of these modern retro computers? Let me know in the comments.